God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Please rise as we sing of the greatness of the Lord.
Heavenly Father. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you for your covering of our sins through the work of Jesus. Thank you for your rescuing hand that is so strong and present when temptation is near. Thank you for your love and compassion that you pour over us and express through us. You've not only given us your love, which is better than life, you've given us so many good things. Forgive us for taking your great faithful, faithfulness for granted. Forgive us for those times when your grace and strength were present, but I was not willing to act in obedience to your call. Open my heart to your renewing and cleansing spirit that forgiven and renewed, we, may we reflect your character and heart shining in the face of Jesus Christ. It is in his name we pray, amen. amen. Brothers and sisters living together in trust and hope, let us confess our words in the words of the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I ask you to turn to one another, make eye contact, and wave as you say God's peace with you. And then you may be seated for the readings. Good morning. Our first reading today is from Genesis 45, 3 through 15. After years of estrangement from his brothers, Joseph is reunited in a surprising way. This is an unforgettable experience of forgiveness and salvation. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But the brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me, and they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve your life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve you, to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it is not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all of Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Gosham and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. <clears throat> I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of your brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all of his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. 
Our responsive reading today is from Psalms, chapter 103, verses 1 through 13. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our inequities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. Our second reading, reading is from 1 Corinthians. Paul contests, contrasts the uniqueness and promise of Jesus with our sinful state. It is truly the difference between life and death. Since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be, all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when his hands over the kingdom of God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And why are we putting ourselves in danger every hour? I die every day. This is as certain, brothers and sisters, as my boasting of you, a boast that I make in Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> if with merely human hopes I fought with wild animals at Ephesus, Ephesus, thank you, what would I have gained by it? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Come to be a sober and right mind, and sin no more, for some people have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that it is, that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. Not all flesh is alike, but there is one flesh for human beings, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are both heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is one thing, and that of the earthly is another. There is only one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. Indeed, stars differ from the star in glory. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, and what is raised is imperishable. Our gospel reading for this seventh Sunday after the Epiphany is recorded in the Gospel of Luke, the sixth chapter, beginning with the 27th verse. Jesus continues teaching, but I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. 
And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend it to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you, you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please be seated, and I invite the young ones to come forward. Where should I sit? Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. You okay? Yeah. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. And it's a nice, it's, it's going to be like balmy out there, isn't it? It's going to be like 50. Yes. So, you know what that means? Spring is coming. Yes. All right. But before we get to that, how many of you, how many of you ever go through a time when you feel mean? You ever feel mean? Yeah, so, and usually that, well, I'd, let's just say that, that somebody's been mean to you, and, and so you, you feel mean in return, that's pretty easy, isn't it? What if you think about it a lot? What happens to your meanness? Does it go up or down? If you think, if you think about somebody who did something bad to you, you think it goes down? Well, maybe sometimes that does. Maybe sometimes it does happen that way. Anybody ever get feeling more mean the more you think of it? Yeah. I've had that problem too. Yeah. So, so th this is one of, one of the things that we're going to talk about that, that I want you to remember. I want you to remember one word. And that is forgive. Can we say that all together? Forgive. Forgive. All right. You know what forgive means? Uh, take, take, an, take a guess. What does the word forgive mean? Hmm? Yep, you're forgiving something. And you, you, well, you know what? The, and in, literally, what forgive means, it means to let go. Yeah, let it go. You ever hear that from your parents? Let it go? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> from Elsa. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh no. Now we're going to have that song playing forever. <laughs> yes. Nothing like a little frozen on a Sunday morning. <laughs> um, yes. Let it go. Let it go. Because a lot of times when you don't let it go, that's when you get feeling meaner and meaner all the time. Um, and and that's, that can be a really hard thing to do, but once you're able to do that, oh, it feels so much better because then you don't, don't have to feel me. And I think I just, okay, it's back on. So, um, so let's, let's bow our heads and let's pray together for God to help us with this. Okay, let's bow our heads and repeat after me. Heavenly Father, help me to let go of those things that make me feel mean. Help me to remember that you're able to carry all the things that make me mad. 
Help me to let them go. And help me to remember you did this for me too. With Jesus on the cross. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. So what's the word today? Forgive. Forgive. Very good. So I'm, we're going to try something today. I want you to take, you can take two, and I want you to, to go to somebody in here and let one of them go. Okay? Think you can do that? Yeah. So you can take, you, you can take more than one, but only keep one, okay? Let the rest of them go. And let's sing for our kids. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Yep, let just... Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're on our, cla- the, our closing week, uh, the last week of Epiphany, uh, the season of Epiphany. Um, we've had a longer season of Epi- uh, Epiphany just because of the way the year kind of lays out. Um, and uh, we're going to be heading into Lent right after next Sunday. Isn't that something? Um, but let's, not, let's just kind of dwell on, just got to live in the, in the, where you're at. So we're still in the last pe- bits of Epiphany. And Epiphany is all about revealing things. Uh, you know, we, when you have a, an, an Epiphany, you've just discovered something, you didn't, something that you didn't otherwise know. Uh, that's what new epiphany, if Epiphanies are all about. The blinders get pulled away just a little bit. Uh, and in this case... The blinders get pulled away just a little bit as to who Jesus is and why he does what he does. Uh, and, and how he get, gives us the big, in, a really big inter, introduction into the heart and character of God. You know, a few weeks ago I unpacked what it meant to say that God is holy. In other words, that, that God is whole uh, in a way that we have no normal experience. And this is very much what Peter experienced in the boat as Jesus uh, uh, used his boat to, to do some teaching. Uh, and we also have the blinders, so there's that part of it, but we also have the blind, our, our blinders pulled away j- uh, just a bit as to just how broken our world is. And last week, Pastor Scott reminded us of the emptiness that we all carry with us, especially if we've turned our backs on God, that there's a hole in there that, that longs to be filled, and the only way it can be filled is with a connection with God. That is what you were created for. Now we're going to take it one step further this morning as God's wholeness meets human emptiness. Now the Hebrew word that describes what goes on as the two meet is the word shalom. Let's just all say that together. Shalom. Shalom. Ah, if you're in the Middle East, uh, especially in Israel, uh, you'll get greeted with that. And you'll also say goodbye using that same word, shalom. Now, we often just translate it simply as peace, but it means, it's a very, this is a very rich word. It means, it, it means uh, uh, peace in its absolute perfect sense, if I could put it that way. It means that, that you have a good sense of well-being, that, 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 that prosperity would, would be yours, that, that all of the pieces in your life that need to be uh, put together would be in those places. And, uh, um, and that it means wholeness, completeness, uh, everything in its place. Uh, and, um, and to experience shalom at, is to be in harmony, be in harmony with God and being, harmony, and being in, har- in harmony with your neighbor as well. Um, so there again, shalom, that sense of completeness, everything in order, everything in its place, just as it should be. So shalom, may shalom, yes, may God's peace be yours. Yeah. And one of the chief enemies of that kind of shalom is our own pride, of course. 
let's be honest, we all want to be God. So at times we'll take matters into our own hands uh, and there are times when we really don't care what the consequences are. So let's turn to a little piece of the Old Testament. And I'm going to just uh, introduce this with a little, a little bit of the backstory. Now the family of Jacob and his, uh, and his wives, Leah and Rachel, uh, were not picture perfect. Now just the very fact that, you know, he's been married, uh, he, you know, you, he's got two wives, that's a whole entire story in and of itself. Uh, there was a lot of trickery, a lot of deceit going on there. I won't get into that. But let's just say that, that Jacob, Leah, and Rachel all had their favorites in the family. And this favoritism was caused for a lot of infighting between siblings. So, and the Bible doesn't cover any of this up. It's quite a story. Uh, Jesus, uh, I should say, Joseph was the favorite son of his father Jacob. And Jacob spoiled him rotten. Uh, and the resentment of his other ten older brothers uh, became to the point of being poisonous and even murderous. You know, no shalom. Nothing was in its place as it should be. Um, here, and, and, and uh, this brings us to the practical application for this morning. Just consider two statements of deep importance to every one of us as human beings. There are two statements, only three words each, that will restore shalom almost every time, and yet they are so hard to express. These, were, uh, uh, these, these are, I am sorry and I forgive you. I am sorry and I forgive you. Let's, let's just rehearse that for just a bit. Let's just, just say those two things. I am sorry. sorry. I forgive you. Very good. You're all ready. You're ready to, re, to, to restore shalom where shalom was not. See, uh, uh, these are the two toughest statements to say and to really mean. Why? Because pride gets in the way. You may have a hard time admitting that you're wrong. Now, even more, we're slow to give forgiveness to those who ask it from us, the reason being is our desire for control. We like exercising leverage over a person. Uh, you know, they owe us something. And to control them, we will remind them of their debt that they cannot pay, and we will return, to that, we will return them to that debt again and again and again. Uh, you know, brothers and sisters definitely do it to each other. And uh, sometimes parents do it to their kids, and employers do it to their employees as well. And so it goes. Yeah, it's a shalom killer. And the level of resentment in this particular family, Jacob's family, uh, and what was going on between Joseph and his brothers was quite high because of this. They were, they were jealous. They hated Joseph. And they began to say to themselves, you know, life, my life would be so much better without him. You ever... You ever considered that statement? My life would be so much better without fill in the blank. Hmm. I know I definitely heard that statement come out of the mouths of, of some kids directed at their brothers and sisters. And, uh, you know, my life would be so much better without them. So we take steps to be God of our lives and to make it a reality. Joseph's ten older brothers decide to do away with their spoiled, rotten little brother. And they were going to outright murder him. But Reuben, the oldest brother, stopped them and convinced them, no, let's not, let, let's not do any killing. Let's do the next best thing. Uh, we're just, just, let's just sell him into slavery and we'll never see him again. And so that's what they did. And this is the genius behind the war that tries to destroy shalom. This kind of, uh, uh, Satan does not come alongside of these brothers and say, well, here's something that's really going to wreck your family. <laughs> he comes alongside and says, oh, you deserve better. Your cause is just. You've endured this spoiled, rotten kid long enough. 
Yes. And your life will be so much better. And besides, more than likely, you're not going to get caught. Well, Joseph was 17 years old about, at the time that he was sold. He would never see his mother again. Uh, and uh, he was separated from his family for about 22 years. Now, if you had been on the receiving end of that, if you were, would have been on Joseph's end of that, what would you have done the day your brothers came with an, ear, uh, with an eye shot? You know, you, can you imagine the kind of soul journey Joseph took through those 22 years? You know, you would think that revenge was not far from Joseph's mind. That same thought, I want to be God of my life. And my life would be so much better without them. Well, pain can do a lot of things. It can either make you bitter or it can soften and sweeten you depending on the choices that you make. Joseph respected God to let God be his peace. In the 22 years of separation, Joseph's heart changed. He encountered God's holiness. He encountered God's forgiveness toward him as, as well. And, you know, uh, he knew that God was not far from him. Now remember what we read in Psalm 103? Now, we had that as a responsive reading. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. And as a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him, you know, for those who deeply respect him. Good words. Joseph set pride aside and came close to God in spite of what he had suffered. And I'm sure he was, he was willing and able to see his part in the mess. I mean, he wasn't completely innocent. He'd played a part in driving his brothers to turn on him. I mean, after all, he was a spoiled, rotten little kid. You know, and with that epiphany, he experienced God's compassion. And there again, he was changed by it. God gave Joseph peace. He restored Joseph's sense of shalom, that sense of wholeness, putting, things, putting all of the pieces where they belong. And of course, the question remains now, would that same shalom extend to the rest of the family? And of course, here, here's where our reading picks up uh, for this morning. You know, Joseph became the chief administrator in Egypt. He controlled the food supply in a time of a widespread drought. And one bunch that was forced to turn to Egypt for food was, you know, what are the odds? Joseph's brothers. It was their third trip to Egypt, and that third time that they, they stood at Joseph's presence. Joseph knew who they were. They, weren't, they did not know him. But Joseph, at this point, just couldn't hold it back anymore. And full of emotion, Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But the brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. You know, what an amazing picture of this. You know, and, and this is where I would like to... Uh, you know, put in this place, you know, a hallmark family hug, right? That's, that's, that's where it belongs. Oh, grand reconciliation right here. Oh, it'd be perfect. But that, that, did that happen? Uh, no. No. Why? Because Joseph's brothers were in the midst of their absolute worst nightmare. I mean, the brother that they had intended to destroy was now standing over them with power of life and death. And what, it seemed to, to, what, what, it was, what seemed to be so right 22 years ago turned into 22 years of regret. And that is a harsh thing for any of us to face. 
And that and you know and and the monster in the room is not the person we tried to off. The monster in the room is us. It's me. That we have participated in the creation of our circumstances, that we have sinned great sins, that we have carried heavy regrets because of those sins, and that life has, and, and as a result has not become better because of our choices, but it's become worse. And here's the object of our vengeance standing in front of us. And we're terrified because the words coming from his mouth are not what we expect or what we want. You know, what does it even mean? Come close to me. Why would he say that? You know, they could have never expected that the one uh, that they rejected would ever want to be close to them again. You know, it's for something about us human beings where, you know, what, uh, once there gets to be a rift between us, we would just as soon run away from each other than to be reconciled. This is why this is so hard. And here's even more, something more, that Joseph openly calls out what is going through their minds. He's identifying their sins. And where he states, And now don't be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. You know, don't be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. You know, there again, what what they had intended for evil, God used to preserve, preserve life. Um, Yes, the resentment was, the the anger was there, the distress definitely was there. But here uh, Joseph goes and and takes it that extra step by saying, this is, uh, but this fit in, you know, God made this fit in his grand plan and design. He showed me this, and I am now at peace. You know, he, he brought me here to preserve life. You know, just think of all of the people who hang on to bitterness and resentment and don't, are, are just incapable of letting it go. You know, he said that or she did that, and they flat out refuse to forgive. They are too proud to admit that they actually might have had something to do with it themselves. And they are chained and enslaved by it. God had worked in Joseph's life so that he was able to let it go. Let it go. Look at the bigger picture. Let it go. In Joseph, we see precisely what Jesus taught in Luke chapter 6, where Jesus states this, I I say to you that that listen. (laughs) Got ears? Are you listening? You know, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. And let's not forget verse 31 do to others as you would have them do to you. That wonderful golden rule. And that is Luke 6.31. So if you want to know where the golden rule is at, Luke 6.31. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. Uh, And then uh, concludes this piece by saying, be merciful just as your, your father is merciful. And we see it in Joseph's actions as he says to his brothers, come close to me. Come close to me. You know, that's God's heart for you and for me. And that's the restoration of shalom. It's experiencing God pulling together a broken world with every piece in its proper place, and it's beautiful. Like Simeon and like Reuben and the rest of Joseph's brothers, there's nothing that any of us can do to repay the debt we owe God. We can't. But guess what? Someone has done something to cover what I can't pay. And it's been entirely a gift. Any time that I begin to harbor resentments towards other people, it's often because I've forgotten the significance of what God has done for me, for my sake. And that Jesus shed his blood on the cross. And that this isn't just just a, a nice little story or a platitude. This is real. That was necessary to pay the debt that I owe. And 
the grace of God and paying that debt that I cannot pay to, uh, to, be, uh, to be able to fathom that is absolutely necessary for His wholeness, His shalom to take place in my life. And that's the only way to end the war. And it's the only way that men like Joseph could have possibly have had the strength to say, come close to me. Come close to me. So how might you and I be able to invite that kind of peace and healing? You know, receiving the grace of God's shalom may come easily, just as easily as two simple statements. They are, I am sorry and I forgive you. Those are the first steps in making something broken whole. I am sorry and I forgive you. So let's join God in pulling together a broken world. Shalom. And let, let us all keep and live the faith. Amen. Would you please rise? Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we welcome your presence, your shalom, the wholeness that you bring. Open our eyes to experience you. You desire to pull together a broken world, Lord. Thank you for gathering us together, for loving us even when, when we are un, unlovable, for your patience when we are tiresome, when we are blind or hypocritical or prideful. Thank you. Thank you for your tender discipline that longs to heal us, to bring us to your wholeness. And help us to stop hiding that we may confess our sin to you and to those whom we have harmed. Let us receive your life-changing forgiveness, that peace that is offered through your Son, Jesus, Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, your Son commands us that, that we do to others as we would have them do to us. We lift to you those who are wrestling with resentment or jealousy or anger. Peace has been broken. It has, been, it has pushed them away from others. May your truth bring healing through confession. Tear down walls, open the doors. I am sorry. I forgive you. Help them, Father, to see you as the one who can restore peace where there is no peace. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we lift up those whom you have called to keep the peace. We lift to you our police and sheriff's departments. Empower them by your Holy Spirit to see the welfare of of our community. May they see your aid as, as they work to reduce the tensions between us and, and restore trust and safety. We also lift up those who serve in the armed forces. We live in some difficult times and these are difficult callings. We lift to you, especially this day, Alex Holly. Ryan Baxter, Nathaniel Lease, and all who offer themselves to serve our nation. Let the power of your presence give them the courage and the strength they need to face what they must face. And let hope and comfort attend their families. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, may your peace come to those who seek your healing. We pray today for Pat Traumer, Dan Erickson and Serene, Jean Elke, Darlene Schrader, Carolee Lindenberg, Ron Wagey, Donna Trigestead, Bev Belliott, and Zoe Bolden. 
surround them with your healing spirit. And we also join with family and friends as they pray for Brett, Aaron, and Chrissy, Jeanette, Brent, and Talon, for Don and Peyton, Patty and Sarah. We pray for Anita, Emery, Emmett, and Alyssa, and those whom we name in our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Father, you desire us to be whole. Give us the grace to draw from, from your wholeness. And we give our lives again to you as we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now as we gather at the Lord's table, let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God, and blessed is your Son, Jesus. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way also he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. Because you are one with us, O Christ, make us one with you as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. I invite our helpers to please come forward at this time.
Please stand if you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bless you, strengthen you, and keep you in his grace. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kyrie eleison means Lord have mercy. about to say Kyrie eleison means Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. <laughs> yes, yes. And he does. And uh, he's been, he's going to be very merciful to us today. It looks like the sun is shining and hopefully uh, um, a little mercy before maybe a little winter comes back, but we won't talk about that. Um, two things to announce. Uh, today at five o'clock we are um, we're having an informational meeting for our, our youth mission trip. So any of the teenagers um, or families of teenagers, uh, middle school, high school, if you are interested, it doesn't mean you are coming if you don't want to commit quite yet or not, but if you're interested and you'd like to know more about it, 5 o'clock this afternoon here at the church, we're going to talk about our mission trip for this summer, and that happens in July. Um, the other thing that's happening is this coming Saturday, our fifth graders are going through First Communion, and that'll happen on Saturday morning from 8 till noon. And I guess what I'd like to say is that anybody else, fifth grade or up, if you want to learn more about what communion is about or anything like that, come on to the church, and uh, you can be a part of that too. So with that said, let us go in peace. Serve the Lord.